Well, I said I'd follow up my sandbox video with Bungie's sandbox preview for Beyond Light, so here we go. We're going to do the notes first, and I'm going to do my thoughts after the notes. Just check the timestamps for whatever you want to see. This is only weapons, by the way. There were no subclass changes announced. We're going to start with hand cannons. I did not speak about hand cannons literally at all in my video because I don't think there's anything too crazy balance-wise with them, but here is what's coming. First, 110 RPM hand cannons are now 120 RPM hand cannons, and Bungie will now be able to tune them individually of other hand cannons. Next, Adaptive, aka 140 RPM, and Precision, aka 180 RPM hand cannons, will have their range stat have more impact on the minimum damage falloff range. Example, damage falloff for 100 range now starts at 25 meters, it was 20, sounds like a buff to me. 180 RPM hand cannons had their magazine sizes scaled up 37%, and that affects exotics with that RPM as well. Next, and this is probably the biggest news, lightweight, aka 150 RPM hand cannons, have been moved into the 140 RPM family. 150 RPM hand cannons are gone for the most part, and this does include Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten. The only hand cannon that will remain 150 RPM is Sunshot. Having 140 and 150 RPM hand cannons in the game just felt very redundant. 150 RPMs always killed faster, but Bungie chose to roll 150s into 140s as opposed to the other way around for crucible balance purposes, as making everything into 150 RPMs could have potentially led to yet more hand cannon dominated crucible metas. Snipers are next. Bungie wants them to be powerful without being so easy to use that they dominate. Therefore, they adjusted how aim assist is affected by sniper rifle zoom level. Lower zoom scopes have less aim assist now, higher zoom scopes have more. Scopes with around 50 zoom are unchanged. Lowest zoom scopes have a large reduction in aim assist cone angles, highest zoom have a small increase. Auto rifles, 600 RPM autos are getting nerfed. Damage per bullet is going from 15.75 to 14.25. This is still higher than the 13.75 that they were at before Season of the Worthy. Scout rifles. Oh boy, here we go. Bungie says that they have a reasonable time to kill and cannot be tweaked much more without making them dominate, so they're making them easier to use by increasing how much each point of the aim assist stat widens the aim assist cone. At maximum, the cone will be 15% wider, so it'll be easier to hit shots, essentially. Rocket launchers. They have low reserve inventory, so Bungie is buffing their reserves by one or two rockets, but rockets will be looked at in a future season. Next, we're getting into some more specific things like perks and specific weapons. Outlaw was nuked pretty hard a little while back, is being buffed up from plus 50 to plus 70 in terms of the reload stat bonus. Merciless is getting its total inventory stat increased from 36 to 55. Mountain Top. Ooh, what we got? Bungie lays out a lot of pain points that I mention in my video. Easy one-shot kills, high splash damage, easy cleanup kills, and little room for counterplay. So, they are reducing splash damage by 33% and increasing impact damage such that total damage is 5% lower than before. The projectile velocity is getting slowed down from 40% to 20% speed bonus compared to other special ammo grenade launchers, and the in-air accuracy has been reduced significantly without the Icarus mod by 7 degrees, although much less if you have the Icarus mod. We'll talk about all that. Falling guillotine. Yep, getting it's getting hit with the nerf bat as expected. Reduced heavy attack damage by 24% to bring it in line with other swords. Bungie claims it'll still be a top damage dealer, just not as much as it was before. 
Next, we have the Mida Mini Tool Mida Synergy perk becoming intrinsic on the weapon, and the weapon now has Hip Fire Grip and Kill Clip. Sturm and Drang, the Together Forever perk on Drang, is now intrinsic and has received Accurized Rounds and Moving Target as perks. Ruinous Effigies Transmutation Spheres are getting nerfed. The Aerial Melee Attack Damage is getting nerfed by 25%, so that's doing a light damage attack in the air and, quote, significantly reduced damage on the drain effect on enemy combatants. The heavy slam attack is unchanged. Arbalest no longer strikes shields multiple times, but its efficacy against shielded targets has been increased. And Jade Rabbit has had armor-piercing rounds swapped to high-caliber rounds because of an issue that could have prevented the exotic perk from triggering. Next up, some notes on Adept Weapons in Trials. Well, first of all, they're going to be a thing again in Beyond Light with their infusion caps matching the season they were introduced in. Beyond Light's Adept Weapons will have a cap equal to Season 10's cap, which means you can use them for a couple of seasons before they'll be outdated in terms of power level. Here's how they're going to be a little different. Masterworking an Adept Weapon will give you your normal plus 10 on a stat, and also plus 3 on all other stats. They can use a standard mod or a new Adept Weapon mod, which is earned from going flawless. They are also getting a unique Adept Shader, but this shader cannot be applied to other guns, it's only for the Adept Weapons. Adept Weapon mods come in two flavors, either a small flat boost, like plus 10 range, that was an example given, or a bigger boost with a negative effect. Adept Mag is plus 40 magazine, minus 20 handling, while Backup Mag is plus 30 magazine. Those are all your very significant notes. Let's talk thoughts. 140 and 150 RPM hand cannons getting merged is probably something that should have happened a little while ago. There just did not need to be two variants of weapons that are so close in performance. I know people would have preferred everything go to 150 RPM over 140 RPM. I am personally a bit indifferent on this decision. As long as they are competitive, but maybe not overly dominant like they have been historically, I'm okay with that. I know people really like having hand cannons be the go-to gun for the Crucible, but I still think 140s are going to be around in Crucible. I still think they're going to perform well. They're getting a slight range buff too, in addition to 120 RPMs getting a range buff. Yeah, I, 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 think, they're, I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay. Worst case scenario is they get buffed. 110s turning into 120s is an interesting shift. 110s have basically been pointless in PvP unless you have a damage perk and really good timing. In PvE, 110s needed to be able to one-shot a lot of trash that 140s or 150s couldn't, otherwise they were just not very good. DMG claims that 120s are solid, but we're going to need to wait for Beyond Light to really confirm that. Sunshot is a pretty good gun as it is right now, but if it's the only 150 RPM, well, just keep a lookout for it, because even though it's only 10 RPM, it still is going to have a little bit of an edge. The sniper changes, well, you know, I guess that's one way to try to balance the playing field. I knew that lower zoom snipers still had good aim assist, but I tended to use low zoom because there isn't really anything in the game that warrants using high zoom scopes in the first place. PvP maps are not that big. I guess we'll see how those, you know, quick scopes and drag scope shots are going to do with the low zoom snipers and beyond light. Uh, but I feel like people had more issues with flinch than aim assist. Although I know people did absolutely have a problem with snipers being relatively easy to use. This change is going to affect that. 600 RPM autos getting nerfed was a no-brainer. They're really, really strong, but their absolute dominance is getting reined in, which I think was very expected. We all know how good Gnawing Hunger is. Hopefully, they're still usable in Beyond Light, as they will be stronger overall than they were in the past, just not this level of good. Scout Rifles. Bungie says raising the damage would potentially make them too dangerous. They didn't mention anything on the whole farther away equals you should do less damage philosophy, though, that I mentioned in my video. 
I do like the aim assist buff. If they are going to be the long distance weapon, making them more reliable at those ranges is a good thing for scout rifles. But as a whole, I am not sure how much of this is going to do to solve the community's PvE woes with scout rifles overall. Rockets getting more reserves, I guess, technically is a step in the right direction, but there's still more to be done with rockets. Rocket ammo is just so precious because you only get so much of it, so having more might encourage a little more use of rockets. It might make people less afraid of wasting it on stuff. Grenade launchers get a good amount of reserves, which is why it feels okay to burn a bunch of grenade launcher ammo, but if I only have six rockets... I gotta make them all really count. But it doesn't solve the problem of downtime between shots. If I shoot a rocket, it's really gotta count for it to be worth the time invested in lining it up, firing, and reloading a shot. Otherwise, you basically need auto-loading holster at a minimum, not to mention what feels like their slow velocity and their difficulty of use compared to grenade launchers. Outlaw getting buffed back up a bit. Great, no problems there whatsoever. Merciless getting more ammo, great. Again, no problems there. Feels like it's one of the least used exotics in the entire game and fixes a problem that feels like the rocket ammo problem that I just talked about. Mountaintop. Uh, okay. I, I like the nerfs. I like that nerfs happened. I just worry that the weapon is still going to be really, really obnoxious in PvP. It's going to do less splash, the grenade travels slower, and it's less accurate in the air, all of which sounds devastatingly brutal. But the weapon is just so good right now that even these nerfs seem like they could potentially not be enough, mainly on the whole shoot a shot and then quick swap to something else to finish off the target front. I hope these are as devastating as I want them to be. I am just... Personally, very tired of this gun. No amount of arguments are going to make me change my mind. I just really want to see it leave. Falling guillotine. Getting slapped with a nerf is not a surprise to me whatsoever. The heavy attack was doing some really nutty damage, and swords are already so good as is. Light attacks were not affected. Perks were not affected. So I don't think this is a really big deal for you sword lovers out there. The gap between guillotine and other things is just going to be a little bit smaller, which I think is quite reasonable. Ruinous Effigy getting nerfed is a very unexpected one. I did not see that one coming. This gun had a lot of hype when it first came out, and rightfully so. It's really good. Hype has died down, though, over the months, which is why it might feel unexpected, but the gun was an overperformer. It just kind of flew under the radar. The nerf seeks to reduce the output of damage when doing a jump swipe combo over and over again. Jump swipe, jump swipe, jump swipe. The nerf is not the ground slam heavy AoE attack. Ruinous effigy spheres might as well be recyclable swords. They're really strong. The shield aura AoE thing getting nerfed is not a huge surprise either because of how potent the effect is. Suppression and really high damage is just the ultimate combo. Shotguns getting untouched, going into Beyond Light, that we know of anyway. I think that might upset some people, but I'm going to maintain my opinion on special ammo in that I think the problem with specials right now, at least one of the main issues, is how much ammo you can get access to in a typical PvP match. You can gear yourself to have near permanent special ammo if you want to. If that ever gets adjusted, specials might not feel as oppressive as they might do right now. However, no fusion rifle notes is very disappointing. I would have loved to hear why there were no changes to fusion rifles because right now I think they're one of the weakest PvE weapons in the entire game. I think those were the biggest sandbox things revealed today besides the adept weapon situation. I guess we could talk about that. All right. First off, hooray, Adept Weapons, they're back, following what feels like a familiar design in that they should be a little bit better than the average weapon that you might find, but not maybe so much better that they are overwhelmingly the best option. The Masterwork stats are, I guess, better than nothing, but 
not the most appealing. The mod system's interesting, although my fear is that people will just default to a flat stat bonus over the big gain, medium loss mods, which in turn makes it maybe not a very interesting experience, but I guess we'll see about that. We really need to see what the mods are going to be. And the shaders, you know, that's that's cool with me. Exclusive adept shaders only for those guns. I'm sure some people would have liked to put those shaders on other guns, but if they want to keep it trials locked, uh, you know, that, that doesn't really bother me too much. And uh, that's it. That's what I have for you on the sandbox preview. Overall, nothing too radical in here compared to what I thought was going to happen of the things that I mentioned in my video, although the hand cannon changes are quite significant, quite, quite significant. Definitely going to be keeping an eye on them in Beyond Light, but I do think they will still perform well overall. I don't think they're going to be bottom of the barrel or anything like that. Might take a little getting used to, but I still think they will be a viable option. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.